Hey guys, I want to talk about July 31st. It's not going to be the end of the world. I want to tell you a creation story and I want to tell you about being imprisoned in this counterfeit reality and how and why we're going to get out of it. So let's start. First of all, there's a lot going on on the uh, interweb these days about July 31st being the event, the solar flare. Some of it originated with Lisa Harrison's channel deconstructing the construct and I don't think that she's committed to this 31st being like a solar flare or a massive event but it has gone kind of that way with people replicating that storyline and I don't think that's true not only do I not think it's true I don't feel it's true I know it's not true there may be a big wave as we call them a big uh, ascension wave coming in but it's not the flare and it's not an event that's the first thing. And I want to talk about a little bit about the psychology of what's happening right now amongst people on the internet who are eager for this ascension process and actually want to be right away, you know, up in 5D and getting out of the hellhole called Earth. Well, <laughs> maybe it's not supposed to be that we're getting out of Earth, right? Maybe we're not supposed to be transcending, but transforming. And perhaps it's up to us to understand that even while we have uh, a rescue mission at, at hand by higher forces or of the divine, which I'm going to talk about, to assist humanity to wake up in this dream state, or another way of saying it is to be unplugged from the matrix. Even though we have helpers out there helping us, it is still up to us to do a lot of what's uh, the work that's to come. And it has nothing to do with escaping in the traditional sense, as if we're gonna be plucked off the planet, raptured off the planet, or just, you know, whatever, or just an escape a timeline where bad things are happening and go to a happy place. I don't feel that's the game plan here. <laughs> I really don't. I actually think we're here as humanity which is a divinity in itself, a kind of divinity to transform this place we're in, to make the prison a paradise. But now I'm gonna tell you a creation story because I wanna talk about why there's a rescue mission underway and I wanna put the whole thing in a giant cosmological framework, all right? So the Secret Gospel of John is one of the, um, the texts that was discovered along with others at Nag Hammadi in the desert in the 1940s and it has been translated and there are also corroborating documents elsewhere um, that support that this is an original document created um, in written in Coptic created I believe oh my goodness the original document been a hundred years after uh, the life of Christ but um, I think the versions are looking at a 400 AD nonetheless where whatever the date stamp is on it it doesn't matter the point is the story itself is really cool so settle in, get your cup of tea, because I'm going to tell you a creation story that might help you understand what's happening here right now on planet Earth with us and what's happening in the world and the solar stuff as well. So first of all, there's this thing called the monad, and that's like what we would all call ideally, you know, the, the, the void, the one creative force, the uh, big bang God, the thing that makes it all, the, the source point, the monad, the one. And this monad uh, created e aeons, A-E-O-N-S, which we can call angels to make it more anglophone. And these angels were doing their thing. God was creating them. And they're all made of luminosity of light. And they reflected, you know, the one monad back at itself. It was all really happy, dappy, and good. <laughs> Doesn't say that in the book. That's just my version. And um, then there was this one feminine energy called Sophia. Whether it's female or not, I doubt it. It's androgyny. But nonetheless, the name is Sophia which actually translates anyway, we'll go there. And Sophia uh, did a little bit of a trickery thing and decided with her fast creative power, and I wanna give you a little tip. Sophia would be what we call Lucifer in the English, you know, romanticized version or whatever, in the, you know, Catholic Protestant downline, Christian downline, it would be Lucifer. So Lucifer, Lucy, you know, Sophia, it doesn't really matter what you call it. It's a feminine energy. It's full of light, it's very bright. And it does um, something it shouldn't do. So a rebellion in heaven was the traditional Lucifer so story. But in this case, I'm going to say it is in the Sophia wisdom tradition that this this um, aeon created by the one monad that's full of light decided to have a child by herself. So it's like a single mother thing. <laughs> it's a parent. It's a no daddy story. She doesn't co-create with a masculine energy. So it's her own little thing that she does. And she doesn't con co uh, con um, confide or consort or tap in with the monad to say, this is my plan for creation. So she scuttles off and does this thing and creates her own child. And it, the name given is Yeltaboath. And this is what we would call Satan in our lingo. So you might want to say that, you know, 
Satan, the adversary, is not what we would call Lucifer, the devil. Okay, they're, they're two different forces. So this Yelta Boath <laughs> basically is a deformed being. It's de so what we would call demonic in a way. It doesn't have the light that it's supposed to have in, in relevance to other creatures created by the monad, other Aeon creations. And, uh, and and so basically it's deficient and it has a lot of issues with it. It's kind of like, you know, the ADD god or something. <laughs> and so Sophia keeps it a secret, but then Yelta Boath goes off and creates its own little world where it creates more of itself, it self-replicates, and so there's others of its kind. And then Yelta Boath decides it's going to uh, get tricked into creating humanity. And at will, I think, no, no, let me get this right. Yelta Boath makes Adam and then is tricked by the aeons. Sophia has other, you know, angels around her too. Uh, because I now believe she's confessed her, her what she's done to the rest of the crew. And they are now trying to fix it. And so basically she's they trick Yeltapoath into breathing his light, his energetic spiritual energy, his light. Because uh, he can create just like an aeon, even though he's a deformity, into Adam. And this light doesn't just go into Adam, it leaves him and goes into Adam. And now he doesn't have the light anymore. And Adam has it, his own creation. And so now he's really pissed off. He doesn't have his own light anymore. So this is what's happening with humanity. And then Eve is created as a messenger to uh, another intervention force to help humanity wake up to the fact that we've got the light, right? We are like angelic beings here on earth. Now that's an interesting story, right? And actually the tree of knowledge and the tree of uh, life in the garden, garden of Eden in this story, uh, Yelta Boath created as a prison for his creation to, and a place where he could try to get the light back. And uh, and then there was this intervention in which the serpent which got Eve to eat of the, uh, uh, the tree of knowledge is actually a good guy from the other aeons, you know, who came in. Actually, it's supposed to be Jesus, but don't get up, don't get your panties tied in an auto or that. Who came in as the one to try to get Adam and Eve to taste of the tree of knowledge, which is the tree of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil, to recognize they are in a prison, that they're trapped. So let's get to the, the thing. And my laptop is here because I want to share a song with you. We are in this counterfeit world, and it is dim. That is what this this the creation story myth tells us. It is not neither light nor dark, but it is dim. And you know what? If you not notice it in your own awakening, that as you get clearer and clearer in your in your awakening state like as you're unplugging from the matrix or waking up within the dream that the skies are bluer and the yellows are yellower and the reds are redder and things are brighter and there's more luminosity than you've ever known was possible i don't mean like direct light hitting you i mean things are glowing with light <laughs> i have and that's because this dim counterfeit world is starting to fall away before our very eyes. And that's what this wave is for. And all of these waves are for. For our ability to see what is true to begin to unfold before us. So, And as we begin to see what is true and wake up, we begin to transform this counterfeit world which over which Yalta Boaz slash Satan has no real power. You see, we have the power, guys. We have the divine spark that accidentally got plugged, you know, pushed into us with Yelta Boas, uh, blowing of the life of, you know, into Adam slash. Yeah, I know, I know. That means that God of the Old Testament is a bad guy. I know, I'm going to get so much flack on this for this. Yes, God of the Old Testament, the jealous and angry God, is Yelta Boath. So what does Yelta Boath want to do? Control humanity. Why? Get its light back. How? As far as I can tell, you know, causing anger, fear, disruption, chaos, uh, you know, death, everything, wars. Because I think when we're in those states, our, le our light leaks out of us. And as it leaks out, literally like, like with a straw, Yelta Boath and his cohorts, which we would call the demonic or the parasitic realm, are there to try to get some of it back. And maybe they can't just take it back. Maybe they're stuck feeding on it. You know, I don't really know. Just a good story, isn't it? So because there's so much hype about the 31st and so many people are out there I watched somebody's video today a woman I respect but she's all about getting off of planet 3d earth and can't wait for that big solar flash of an event and well everyone wants to get the hell out I'm going why why it may be a counterfeit reality but it's one that we can transform into a beautiful place from a 
prison to a paradise with the very divinity that we are invested with, with the very light that we have been empowered with when we wake up to recognize that we are earth angels as Nathan Sanders and his um, connection with the Sam energy calls us. We are, we are angelic creatures because we have the light of Sophia and the eons, the aeons, however you pronounce it, within us, transferred from her a bit of a you know mistake, her single son, her single parenting of Yalta Boath. But nonetheless, the energy that we have is the same energy, the same light. Hmm, what to do with this light? That's the question. I say, well, first order of the day, wake up. <laughs> Remember what's true. Feel this light within you. Okay, recognize the light that's everywhere, the luminosity that is coming forth from all of creation, because that light is what you are. There's a channel called uh, Doreen Dotan, and uh, she talks a bit about how the power of our own vision is what will transform reality, and I'll put a link to her post about that below. Uh, she's a Jewish mystic in Israel. Now, I want to say next, the last thing I want to talk about here is, okay, well, what is this July 31st for if it's not the end of days? <laughs> If it's not a big solar flare. So I did my magic music shuffle and I asked for a song and I got Van Morrison's Sweet Thing. Let me open my laptop up to play it and tell you what it says in terms of lyrics. Because unlike uh, some of the dire predictions out there, this sounds quite lovely. So whatever the solar flash is, whatever it's bringing to us, is sweet. It's a sweet thing. And it, even if this isn't a solar flash right now, this is simply the July 31st ish wave. Okay, let's call it that. Um, and also Nathan Sanders and some of his material, I think he's going to be talking about it soon publicly, is discovering that there's coding in dates. When we say dates, July 31st, then re restructure that to a 731. You know, maybe that's a biblical passage. Maybe that's something to be decoded rather than a real date. But when I asked for the song shuffle today, I called the Magic Music Shuffle, and I asked my Spotify playlist to give me a song representing what is really transpiring on the 31st that Lisa Harrison's picking up on in her channel, Deconstructing the Construct. I got the Van Morrison song, Sweet Thing. I should play it for you, but let me read you the lyrics. And I will stroll the merry way and jump the hedges first. And I will drink the clear, clean water. And water is a metaphor, although I would love clean water on earth, right? For spirit, a clear, clean water, clear, clean spirit for to quench my thirst, because we're thirsty for the clarity and the spirit and the divinity and the purity of our truth of who we are. And I shall watch the ferry boats. And ferry boats, I'm on an island with ferry boats because I do this, but ferry boats are also very symbolic. You know, there's the ferry boat across the river Styx, etc. So there's symbolism rife in this one. I will watch the ferry boats and they'll get high on a bluer ocean. Yes, bluer blues, yellower yellows in this new world we're coming to against tomorrow's sky. And I will never grow so old again and I will walk and talk in gardens wet with rain. Oh, sweet thing, sweet thing, my, my sweet thing, and I shall drive my chariot down your streets and cry, hey, it's me, I'm dynamite. And to me, that's, hey, that's me. I'm like super sparky bright light. <laughs> and I don't know why, and you shall make... Take, take me strongly in your arms again. Now I'm saying, as this wave is hitting us on the 31st, can you feel it? Maybe the divine rescue mission? Oh, I forgot to say. So yeah, Sophia is repented kind of of her mistake and the aeons are up there all trying to reach through to humanity and wake us up. It is a rescue mission. Um, and you shall take me strongly in your arms again, and I will not remember that I even felt the pain. We shall walk and talk in gardens all misty and wet with rain. And I will never, ever grow so old again. And of course, gardens is a reference to the Garden of Eden, but not the counterfeit prison created by Yalta Boab, but rather the true garden that we're destined for, the one that we're creating together as humanity, waking up to our divinity. So that song made me feel so tingly when I, I got it. And go Google it. I'm not going to play it for you. <laughs> go find Van Morrison's uh, Sweet Thing. It's a beautiful song. And on that note, I'm saying, I feel like we've got a lot to look forward to as opposed to dread. And I do sense that this is going to be a wave on the 31st or around it of energy coming in. You may feel dizzy. You may feel spacey. You may feel something sublime. You may see greener greens, bluer blues, and yellower yellows. Yes. Yes. But you're not going to leave the planet. The planet is not going to dissolve. Crow just flew overhead in front of a window. And, um, and it's all going to be really good. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm the voice of cheer. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening.